Hey, what's up? Just want to thank you guys for watching our channel. Please hit that subscribe button. When you uh, were talking earlier about trying to beat the other coach, you were playing against the other coach yeah. and not the players. When you competed against LeBron in the Eastern he was Conference. The, he was the he was player yeah. coach. <laughs> he was the guy you were competing against. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, he absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And then the same thing with Kobe. I would say yeah. the same thing with Kobe. Yep. Yeah. Um, those two guys, if I can somehow, some way outplay those guys, we had, I feel like we had to win. And that's just how I approached it. It wasn't like, I felt like I wasn't doing it on my own, but in my mind, you know, when I went to sleep the night before the games, I was like, if I could, you know, put my handprint or my fingerprints on this particular part of the game, I think we'll have a chance to win. If I can do this, if I could maybe talk to P and a little bit more in the pick and roll coverage, if I could tell KJ Day and show a little bit more on LeBron, like, I mean, it was, Always going, it was something obviously just like boxing. Now that's why I love boxing so much. It's always about countering and who can figure out who the quickest and, and make adjustments. Um, you guys won. I wouldn't say easily, but you, it was it was obvious. I think it was obvious, at least as to me, and, and maybe it's different. But in 08, felt like you guys were the best team in basketball. Um, 2010, we played you guys. We had home court advantage in the in the conference finals, and we had beat you the previous year when KG was out. You guys got up 3-0. You won in six games. You go play L.A. That series to me is one of the most fascinating series that I can remember in the modern NBA. It doesn't get talked about a lot. Um, but there's a lot of shit that happened, including Kendrick Perkins getting hurt in game six, being unavailable, Rasheed Wallace playing to the point of exhaustion in game seven, Pau Gasol potentially traveling, I'm just saying, <laughs> late in the game on that layup. Right, yes, saying. he did. His feet <laughs> may have hit the ground. I'm just saying. <laughs> Kobe having an awful game seven shooting, awful right? It's game. like it's awful game seven. There was so much. What what are your memories of that series or even that playoff run, even against us? But that 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 2010 run um where you guys lost in game seven. Uh it was heartbreaking. Um I, I'm sure I think Doc said it somewhere about how he put a uh, hundred dollars in the roof in the ceiling in the locker room um at the Staples Center at the time, and we was going about to get that money, but um I felt like I played my best basketball that particular season. I mean, that series in the finals. And I felt like if we were to won, I had a great chance to be in uh, finals MVP. And that's, that's how close I felt like that we were as a team and me individually playing. Uh, it was a great year for us, but obviously we didn't get the dub. And if you would have told me, you know, two years earlier that Kobe would shoot, I think he was like four for 18 or some crazy number. But he affected the game so many other different ways. You know, he outplayed me. And what I do and what I bring to the game more, I think he had a lot of rebounds. He had, I think he had, like I say, at least over 18 rebounds. He had, I think, 10 plus assists. So he affected the game so many other ways where it wasn't with his scoring. He made the hockey assists. You know, he may not got credit for the assists, but he made the, the swing, swing pass where a guy let it hit the shot, hit the three. No, so Kobe, Kobe in game seven was six of 24, 0 for six from three, but got to the free throw line 15 times and had 15 rebounds for offensive. But that game seven in particular, I'm trying to go through my mind right now, but that might've been the last finals game that was that ugly. Yeah, I don't that. remember. It was, I think it was 83, 79. I don't remember a game that that, that was that ugly in the last 13 years. It was old school basketball. It was old school oh, basketball. Yeah. Um, I want I want to I want to wrap up with just your. I like I like to, to ask guys about how they viewed their own career, right? Whether while right. they're still in the middle of it or whether it's at the end. And I talked about maximizing earlier, and I felt like I always I felt like I was maximizing my career. Um, and there's all this discussion. You had to do it that one day on first take. There's all this discussion on legacy and tiers, um, tier one guy, tier two guy, whatever it is. When you sort of look back, especially like prime Rondo, um, how would you sort of categorize, summarize um, your impact on the game? Back in prime, I was prime. Um, I thought I was easily top three in the game. I mean, I think guards didn't want to play against me. 
I didn't affect the game by 30 a game. So the ways that you had this to me or uh, it's unconventional for a point guard like myself to, to box out, I mean, but you had to box me out. You know, guards that I played against, you know, in, in that particular time, it wasn't a big deal to box out. So if I would get four or five re- offensive rebounds, I'm affecting the game. I'm affecting the game ways that you really don't know how to control. Uh, whether it's manipulating the game as far as a guy may have two fouls, I may run right into him and draw his third. You know, things that don't really show up on the stat sheet, but at that particular time or that moment, we may go on an 8-0 run now because our players out of the game because either I drew the foul myself or I went towards that guy or attack, we attack him as a team to get him out of the game. So um, it, it was it was fun, obviously having a hell of a supporting cast. If You know, if, if to say it was behind me or in front of me, however you want to categorize it um, with the big three. And then along with our role players, you know, I was there, everyone was, was stars in their roles. And that's what I took pride in. You know, I didn't want to be or have to be the superstar or the guy that got all the accolades or the knowledge or the TV time. But you were going to compete. You know, it wasn't no nights off as far as how you were going to check me. And if you did, I feel like we pretty much got the win. If you did play the game that way or if you approached it with that mindset, because um, we were dogs at that particular time and everyone wanted to play. We was really scrappy. We got in a lot of fights that year uh, as far as in practice because of the way we compete against first and second units. So it's just, the games were a lot easier for us. You know, the games were easier for us. And this cliche is to say, but the way we practiced and the way Doc had our mindset throughout the games and uh, in those particular, that particular training camp, uh, we went to Rome and Italy. Um, it made the games in that particular season, those, those years, a lot easier for us on the court.